one. Long talk radio. Ah, yes, here it is. It is my call to you and to myself, actually, for a very soulful Sunday. And I decided, you know, it's nice to change the scenery, isn't it? It's lovely to get a different perspective. And I usually talk to you about doing that inside of your head. But overtly today, I'm going to tell you to get a different perspective by literally using your eyes to look at something different. So here I am with my little friend, my little beta fish. Now, if you're listening to this on Blog Talk Radio, you don't get the advantage of the visual unless you travel over to my YouTube channel at Dr. Deb Carlin where you can see the Zoom call that I upload to YouTube. And what you're gonna see there, and what those of you who are looking at that YouTube video right now are seeing is my little friend, Flurf. <laughs> A little beta fish, they call him Siamese fighting fish. He's somewhere between an inch and two inches long and just beautiful and friendly and lovely and he swims around and he comes and looks at the side of the bowl when I put my hand to it and follows my hand and 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 lets me track him a bit and he's curious and if I just am relaxed and friendly sometimes so let me lead him and this is really kind of peculiar and funny to me, the way in which I feel so delighted to have this little fish. He's beautiful. He spreads his fans, which are his fins. And there's these very pretty colors of reds and blues and silvers. And he goes up to the top of his bowl and he blows bubbles and I give him little pellets of food and he swims around in this little globe and I imagine that things look very interesting from the inside of that little globe. I know that when I walk into the room from two rooms over, I can see him in the distance coming to the side of his bowl that I am entering from. Now, what does all this have to do with soulfulness on Sunday? It has everything to do with it because if I was so disconnected from my inner core, I may or may not have this little fish, but I certainly wouldn't feel a connection to him. When I talk about soulfulness, what I'm talking about is far beyond religiosity because religious is an organization of people who come together to share their faith. And they've shared their beliefs and guidelines, rules. And I love that. And I love to extend beyond it and explore my individual relationship with our creator and my individual unique relationship. And we all have a unique because we are individuals. I like to explore my unique connection with nature. And when I do that, I'm so inspired by the reality that we are all one. We were all created by one creator. We all have blood running through our veins. It is the same chemistry. We all have the same anatomy other than our gender differences. But the basics are the same between all of us. And that causes me to think about the way that we all have souls. You know, none of us gets out of here alive. We are all in this together, this life. But the thing that struck me this morning as I was thinking about this episode and what I wanted to do and where my heart is at and where my soulfulness factor is, I was thinking diligently about the ways in which on social media, 
I'm engaging in these conversations. I make a post and people make their interpretations and I get all these really interesting notes of support, reactions of like, and some people need to be a bit chiding or perhaps they don't quite understand me. That's okay, we're there to understand and to interact. But there is an element of something in the way of a, a misinterpretation and a resultant slamming that is taking place. And it's not just with me. There are friends that I've had for a lifetime who are posting on Facebook saying, I'm gonna go away from Facebook now. It's gotten too aggressive. I'm starting to hide posts and unfriend people. It's because of the behavior of everybody over this corona virus. I'm quitting and going away because of the politics and the upcoming election. Maybe I'll come back after the first of the year. And I think to myself, I can identify with this. I'm hiding posts. I'm walking to the periphery of people. There are some people I've literally just unfriended and there's people that I don't know who I've just completely blocked. And I, and I ask myself if I think that that's okay. And I kind of think it is and I kind of think it isn't. Because if we block ourselves off from one another and we don't come to a point of understanding then how much further do we get? And at the same time, if we allow people into our soul and when you walk into someone's life, you are having entry to their soul because you can't really cut off our soul. It's alive. It's eternal. And if they, if they're aggressive and if they, if they are so, so far into a state of their position that they have anger, if you depart from them at all, then we're asked to question, is it healthy for us to be there? I come back to my dining room table and I look at my little fish perched up on my books. And I look at the title of my book, Build the Strength Within, and I think all of that is my work. It's my core work. Me building upon my own inner strength and then spilling over onto others to help and guide others build upon their inner strength. So what does it say when I'm dismissive of others and, and limiting their access to me. Well, it says I'm exercising some good judgment. It's why we have a door in our house and why we have a lock on our door on our house, right? Social media is really your living room. It's your interior space that you invite people into when they are trusted. And people who we don't know, like, and trust we keep the door locked, we keep the door closed. When people are cruel to you, I have a bishop that I have worked with over the years who I really treasure, he's such a sensible man. He taught me something in the way of a prayerful exercise that I have taken and made my own at his invitation, where I hold my hands out in front of me and I bring the sides of my hands, the sides that run down from my little fingers, I bring them together and I have my palms up and my fingers stretched out but curved. So I have a cup between my two hands as though I'm holding water. And I place the people and the themes that I am in disharmony with into the palm of my hands. And I hold them up. I hold them up high, shoulder height and above. And I, I visualize them there and I pray. And my prayer is, I pray for everything about your life to be sacred and blessed and that you recognize your blessings and that you come to know that miracles happen every single day, all throughout the day. We just have to allow ourselves to see, believe, and then experience them. And when we do, great things happen. And I love you, even if from afar, because I am charged with loving my brethren as I love myself. And self-love can be mighty difficult. 
self-loathing is often pretty easy. And it's not something that I want to indulge in. I want to love myself. I want to live my life as though I truly love myself and I have confidence in me and who I am, what my calling is, what my behaviors are, what my thoughts are, what my words are. When I offend others, I do truly try to find the ways to make over for that not from a position of weakness, but from a position of strength. Because I believe with everything in me that love prevails always. And when we lead with aggression and hatefulness, we lose always. We have all kinds of things being circulated through the media, whether it's social media or it's print media or television or radio that is filled with a lack of unity, kindness, goodness, truth. And so I put my hands together and I ask you to join me in, in an effort to change truly the physical frequency of all of us to upshift us all into a place of happiness and peace an accomplishment, accomplishment of goodness. I know your mind, I know your heart, I know your spirit, and how I know and what I know is that we are all human beings. We crave peace, we crave genuine comfort in our living quarters, in our businesses, in our finances, in our bodies so that we have freedom of movement in our faith in our relationships in our connection to ourself so my prayer is love may love prevail and may all of us come to know every bit of goodness that we possibly can here in this life together as one united as human beings, but every other theme around our humanness over to the side, please, just for this, just for this time, just for this day, just for this commitment to soulfulness on Sunday. And I think that what you'll find and what I'm finding is that it calms me quells me, it allows me a bit of peace. It allows me a belief that I do so dearly want to hold on to. And as you think about that, and you listen to this, hear the beautiful soft music that you love in the background, and just play it over and over again for yourself. Reach out to someone else and share this with them. Share this episode. Seconds. Share your feelings. Share your heart. This is Dr. Duff Carlin, your host here on The K Factor, where K equals kindness, and the factors are all the things that lead to it. And today, the factors are all about soulfulness on Sundays. God bless. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.